Hi everyone, my name is Orhan Ergün. A little bit about my background. I am a CCI and CCDE. I am writing my blogs on packet pushers and network computing. I am doing for in general design podcast for the packet pushers. And in this video, I'll talk about uh, ether channel, multi chassis ether channel, and equal cost multi pads. What do you see? from the figure 1, figure 2 and figure 3. Which one is ether channel, which one is multi chassis ether channel and which one is ECMP and why? Okay, let's start. Figure 1 between the two switches uh, this port is connected directly connected and this code is link aggregation group or ether channel or uh, some another vendor can call it port channel all of them same but in the standard you will see link aggregation group okay between the two switches two links uh, can create a bundle a group and from this switch one to switch two and switch two to switch one these links without any layer 2 loop can be used. Of course it can be more than 2 up to uh, 8 or based on vendors how they implement at up to maybe 16 it, they can be used. And between the two switches this is called link aggregation group or ether channel multi sorry ether channel and port, port channel you can see on different vendors even on the same vendors different equipment you can see different uh, definition all of them same in figure 2 we see the multi chassis link aggregation group or also multi chassis ether channel you can see it okay uh, ether channel cisco used this terminology uh, here, from this switch, we, we have two uplink, layer 2 uplink. By the way, for the figure 1 also we have uh, these blue links for the layer 2 link. And in the figure 2, red link is layer 3 link. In figure 2 also, these links are layer 2. And between this switch 2 and switch 3, also layer 2 link. Uh, this link is necessary. This link will be used for control plane synchronization, uh, MAC address also will be learned, so on and so forth. And now we will have the ability to use this from switch 1, both link as active, although we have layer 2 link between the switch 2 and switch 3. Normally, if we wouldn't use multi chassis ether channel, if we wouldn't have that ability, this would create a forwarding loop. And once we enable spanning tree, if we have the spanning tree, spanning tree based on the root placement, if this switch is your root switch, spanning tree from the switch 1 to switch 3 link, this link would be blocked. Then, in this way, the packet would be forwarded. Okay, but with the multi chassis ether channel, this inter switch link will be used for the control plane synchronization. Switch 2 and switch 3 will tell them to each other okay, we will use our downlink to switch 1. They are in the one bundle. Please don't forget this information. Okay, now for Cisco. There is two technology use multi chassis ether channel as underlying VSS and VPC. VSS for in general in the campus on 4500, 6500, those uh, switches you will see this VSS, Virtual Switching System, I believe it stands for, and VPC on the Nexus 5K, Nexus 7K virtual port channel. What's the difference between them? For the VSS, you will actually, for switch 2 and switch 3, one control plane only will be used and one management plane as well. So, if you go to switch 2, from the switch 2 you will configure both switch 2 and switch 3 and also all, let's say, uh, we have 
first of redundancy protocol are gateway on the switch uh, distribution layer switches on either switch 2 or switch 3. If switch 2 is the active control plane, so this switch 2 will actually the process HSRP or VRRP or GLBP first of redundancy protocol BPDUs. So this will be the active control plane. This will switch 3 will stay as standby and if switch 2 goes down it will take the responsibility this is for the VSS VPC is a little bit different for the VPC still you, you will have this of course inter switch link layer 2 link uh, for the control plane state synchronization also for the data plane if you need for the VSS and VPC this inter switch link if you have to use you will use otherwise this link will be used only for the control plane. Okay, let's assume uh, this link goes down and from here to here the traffic still uh, might be directed in this case. Okay, for the VSS we were talking what's the difference the VSS from the VPC. <clears throat> for the VPC you have two different management and two different control plane. You will go to switch 2 and configure it individually and also you will go to switch 3 configure it individually but still from the switch 1 to switch 2 and 3 links these layer 2 links will be used actively there is no spanning tree involved actually spanning tree for as a uh, protection mechanism will be used but there is no spanning tree block link so on and so forth multi chassis ether channel is giving us this ability and actually from the spinning tree point of view although we have here three switches spinning tree point of view you can think they are connected like this only two switches and between them there is two link this is multi chassis ether channel and both technology is using it VSS and VPC for the VSS there is one control line management plane for the VPC, they are separated. Okay, in figure 3, we have layer 3 link between the switch 1, switch 2 and switch 3, which means we will have a routing protocol there. It might be static route or IGP or even BGP for, uh, for the bigger scale uh, implementation. Why ECMP I am calling it? Because from the routing protocol point of view, I assume the metric of these two links from switch 1 to 2 and switch 1 to 3 is the same. So in the routing table and in your forwarding table, this link will be installed and used actively. This concept is called ECMP and both links will be used actively. Thank you for watching me. For the next video, stay tuned.